Hey, what's going on guys? This is Miosin. Today I'm actually going to be, uh, I guess, uh, reviewing the new uh, Shadal cards. There's also new Edlich cards and new Laval cards and... Hold on, there's definitely something else, but yeah, before we start, friendly reminder to like and subscribe, blah blah blah. There is one final thing that I want to say though, uh, just to make sure that people actually know my intentions. The reason why I made the Metal Fools deck profile is because people actually asked for it, and that's usually what I do every time I make a combo video. So now, if what you want to say to me is don't make a deck profile if you don't think it's a good deck. Uh, with a mentality like this, there's no reason to make a deck profile on anything that isn't like top 5 decks. So, you know, you can also play Yu-Gi-Oh for fun or you can play Yu-Gi-Oh in preparation for future formats or if a card gets unbanned, for example, it's really important to know Metal Force combos even without Lechum because if a Lechum comes back then at least you actually know how to play Metal Force. So my combo video wasn't actually useless and my deck profile had interesting insight and on, uh, extremely honest insight which is the most important thing about it. So if you disagree with me, uh, there might be something extremely wrong with your mentality and if you want to, I guess, just vomit your negativity on me just because you had a rough day or something, I don't care, I have zero respect for you. Grow up, uh, this is not about you, this is about just trying to, I guess, get people, I don't know, think better, but uh, this deck profile today was an, an actual disaster, so that's why I'm saying this, people are just uh, uh, not reacting well at all, and I, I can't tolerate that, so it's either like you want me to become a worse person, and you know, you want me to lie and manipulate you, which I can totally do if you really want me to do that, or I can actually just... Uh, Keep being honest. When I whenever I make a deck uh, deck profile on a you know video, I just uh, I I I'm, I keep I keep staying honest. But anyways, uh, let's get uh, let's get into the video. So the first card is Nep Shadal Genius. Always a really cute word before the Shadal. Eh? There is Nile Shadal Ariel, uh, Resh Shadal Wendy, and there is another one actually. Uh... I think. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's a ne uh, interesting, cool, and genius. So basically, it's the combination of Shadal monsters and Clifford monsters. It's a level four Earth machine. Oh, interesting. Okay, it's not even a spellcaster. Okay, cool. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, every time there's like a combination of like a Shadal monster and something else, it's always uh, the other type, you know. Uh, so Wendy was Ritual Beast. Uh, Ariel was Necroz. Yeah. So you can target one Shadow monster, that's the flip effect. You can shul, it is unaffected by monster effects while face up on the field except its own. Uh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, the second effect though, if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one effect monster on the field. It cannot activate its effects on the field for the rest of the turn. Man, I love this so much. Oh, You can actually use uh, El Shadal Fusion to fuse for, I don't know, even Winda during your opponent's turn, send this in like a dark monster, and then, you you know, your opponent actually has a Neptibis. Being able to stop him from actually activating its effect sometimes is actually better than just negating an effect, because now they can't even get the cost. So, the effect to beat Neptibis is just perfect in this scenario, I love this so much, and I think this card will 100% be played in Shadows, at least as a one of. Probably one of will be enough, because the flip effect monster, uh, the flip effect, uh, you know, of, the, of this monster isn't too great. But the effect when it's actually used for fusion summon, absolutely fantastic, I love it so much. Yes, and also the artwork is gorgeous. You know, it's purple is my favorite color, as you can already tell, so... Another purple card, man! Hell Shadow... <laughs> Hell Shadow Void. So this time, an Infernoid monster, I think? Yeah, because Void is the... you know, yeah. Uh, flip, you can target... Flip, come on, it's level 9. Well, well, to be fair, you can easily summon it with um, Wendy. It's not too bad. Flip, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, send one Shadow monster with the same attribute from your extra deck to the graveyard, and if you do, banish that target. Ah. Alright, so first of all, this card will never be more than a one-of, but be before I keep uh, continuing, actually, uh, actually, before I keep talking, I want to uh, read the, the rest of the effect. This card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. You can send cards from the top of your deck equal to the graveyard equal to the number of different original attributes on the field. Alright, this effect is not too great. But the flip effect, though, very unique. So first of all, the Shadow monsters, they actually just... Uh, there's a Shadal Extra Deck monster for every attribute in the game except Divine Attribute, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> and yeah, so you can banish every, like, potentially any monster your opponent controls. 
and this can actually become an interruption during your opponent's turn. So, you can El Shadal... Yeah, okay, you can El Shadal Fusion for a Construct, and then send the trap. Wait, hold on, maybe the trap is like, accept the turn it is sent to the grave. Well, no, I don't think so. Yeah, you, you can send the trap with Construct, and then uh, with Wendy, you summon this uh, to your... Uh, from your deck to the uh, field face down, and then you actually banish the trap, flip your your void, and then banish a monster, send the Shadal monster, uh, you know, from your ad ad extra deck to the graveyard, recycle back your El Shadal fusion, and then, oh my god, that's just... Or you can send Apkalon, if it's a dark. Wow, yo, this card is actually pretty solid. Just being able to banish a monster, finally. And it makes summoning Construct during a bonus turn really nasty. And once again, uh, thanks, uh, thanks to the, um, you know, Shadal's, uh, Shadal Rook, I'm just gonna call it Shadal Rook. It's a continuous trap card, now it's called Shadal Schism or something. Uh, just being able to fuse during your opponent's turn is a joke now, so I'm down. Yo, these two cards are fantastic. At least, they're, I think as a, as one-ofs, it's enough, but they're good one-ofs. It's not like crappy one-ofs that you're like, meh. I'll just play them because they're cool. No, no, they're actually decent. I like them. And now another card is Galaxy Eyes Cypher X Dragon. Two level 10 monsters. 4k attack, not too bad. Now it's per turn. You can also exceed summon uh, Cypher X Dragon by using a Cypher Dragon monster you control as material. Easy. There's a Cypher and Cypher Blade, but I don't think you can use Cypher Blade as an Xyz material to turn it as uh, Xyz summoned. I could be wrong though. Anyways, you can detach two materials from this card. Your opponent cannot target light monsters you control with card effects until the end of the turn. Uh, uh, whatever. It's not the best. But I think if you use this and then you keep summoning light monsters, your opponent still cannot uh, uh, target you. I don't think it's worded the same way as Azure Eyes is worded. Because Azure Eyes, it's only the monsters you currently control that they cannot be targeted. But this, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the same way... Uh, Cyber Eternity Dragon in the graveyard works, so, yeah. And once per turn during your standby phase, Oh Man, this is, okay, this is already bad. The effect has to be broken now. It's not that good. You can return one rank 9 or lower Dragon Exceeds monster from your graveyard to your extra deck, and then special summon that monster from your extra deck by using this card you control as material. Mm-mm, nah, uh, this card is, this card won't change much. Uh, it's, it's cool to be able to like slap 65 billion XCs on your cypher, but nah, I'm not too big of a fan. Although, wait, hold on. Well, you can also XC summon cypher X by using a cypher dragon monster you control. Maybe, wait, hold on. When you use cypher dragon on your opponent to steal them, I think you can actually overlay this on top, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, whatever. Decent, let's just say. Uh, Laval Archer, I don't know much about Laval, uh, outside of, well, first of all, it's a city in Quebec, and also, uh, the deck obviously sucks, but they all have a really unique defense stat, which makes them always not bad, technically, by design, but that's the reason why they will never be meta, is because their defense stat is so overpowered that they cannot be good, and in case you were wondering, it's because Rekindling, if I recall correctly, is a 3, and it is a soul charge for your 200 defense fire monsters. Decatron is a 200 defense monster. So Lavals, they can easily foolish three cards in one shot from the deck to the grave. And there's technically a Laval monster that's banned right now because it was abused outside of the deck and it's Laval Volchain. So Laval Archer, 1000 attack, 200 defense, of course. This card is normal summoned. Uh, you can activate this effect during your main phase, additional normal summon. So, okay, additional normal summon for your Laval. Uh, that's an Evil Swarm caster effect, very, very cool. And if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one fire monster you control. Uh, you can now special summon from, uh, from the extra deck, except fire monsters, also destroy that target, okay? And if you do special summon this card in defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. Okay, cool, so uh, what I can actually see with this effect is synergy with true, um, sorry, not true kings, well technically a bit, but not really. Uh, there's synergy with uh, Fire Kings, Fire King, Avatar, blah blah blah, you know. Uh, yeah, the Fire Kings actually, they do work very well, they love being destroyed, obviously. Uh, just like dinosaurs like to be destroyed, but if it said like Earth, it would have been better. I mean, <laughs> obviously it wouldn't have made sense. No, uh, it's cool. Uh, free Special Summon again, it's a uh, El Mirage target, sure. Once again, uh, the fact that you can revive back everything makes it so if this deck actually just randomly gets a boost in the future, instant tier 0. 
because rekindling soul charge for five no cost no drawback no nothing pretty broken but yeah uh, salamander so shout outs to salamandrait uh, level 7, generic almost, but non-tuner fire monster, so not really. <laughs> this card is Synchro Summon, you can draw two cards, then send two cards from your hand to the graveyard, and if you can't, uh, at least, uh, okay, with at least one fire monster, but if you can't do that, you're kind of screwed, because uh, you would have to reveal your whole hand, and, you know, put it back uh, in your deck, shuffle it. So, this is cool, because it's a level 7, almost generic, but Infernoids can use this. So you can go turn one, like Decatron, send something, and then summon like another Inferno from your hand. Make this, draw two cards, send two garbage Infernos, who cares? But what is important is it allows you to actually dig your deck for that Void Vanishment. So I like this. And then once per turn, you can banish one Fire Monster from your graveyard. Change face-up monsters your opponent controls to face-down defense. Up to the number of Aval Monster you control. <coughs> so it includes itself, so you, you can always do at least one. And it doesn't target, which is fantastic. It technically outs Dragoon the turn it is summoned. Wow, not bad. Uh, but it is not a quick effect, so that's an issue. If you summon it going first, the only thing you're really doing is just draw two cards and then send two from your hand to the grave. I don't know how relevant that is, but once again, in the actual Laval deck, this is nasty. And once again, 200 defense is just terrifying, huh? Alright, sure, I'll take that. Definitely cool. Alright, now let's get into the Eldritch cards, which I actually already know about. Uh, there is a fusion spell and a fusion monster. And by the way, yo, this uh, this reprint, I mean, this gold rare reprint Appaloosa is literally the most gorgeous thing ever. Uh, they sacrificed the bear, but uh, for a good reason. The bear was not needed. The Crystal Lake water is insane, the bow is legendary, and just Appaloosa herself looks really cool. Just the moon with the sky, oh, I love this so much. Literally the best artwork I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And I actually cannot wait to see if they made the gold rare rarity better in future sets, so yeah. Anyways, by the way, <laughs> when I saw these two cards, I was like, wait, Eldritch support? Oh, okay, maybe Golden Lord going to one, one day maybe? I don't know, it's, um, I don't think Konami wants this deck to be out of control. So the first one is El Rey Conquista El Lich. Uh, light Zombie, <laughs> obviously didn't pronounce it with a Spanish accent. Light Zombie Fusion Effect level 10, 3800 attack and 3500 defense. So cute. It's like reverse Eldritch with the 1000 bonus. And even the first, of the technically the first... The first real effect is uh, an effect that Eldritch, the Golden Lord himself, already technically has. But even better, because it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. Super, super, super annoying. And also, on the field, is it, it is Eldritch, the Golden Lord. So it actually turns on Conquistador, uh, Golden Land, Forever... Uh, sorry, uh, the, you know, the Counter Trap, uh, Hakuero, Guardian of the Golden Land. This is insane. And um, for fusion summoning it, you need one Eldritch monster. Okay, Eldritch monster. You already know that this is probably just himself and Eldritch the Golden Lord. And the level 5 or higher zombie monster. So every single one of your traps, Doom King. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and yeah, the, him and uh, Eldritch. Well, technically, you can use two Eldritch the Golden Lord for this. So in other words, for me, the main purpose that I see of this card is Super Poly in the mirror. So uh, your opponent always loses like a lot of traction because you're using this to disrupt him and summon the boss monster of your own. And it takes 10 years to out. It's really annoying. You summon it in defense. It's literally the biggest nightmare in the world. If you summon this in a gold uh, Eldritch mirror match, you cannot just win the game. They have to use Eldritch effect from hand and they're very vulnerable when you do that. So... Mm -mm. Uh, very fantastic card already, and there's even another effect! Oh, I feel like we were gooch just with that. Just with the materials, it already makes it a good card because it's a good super poly target. But now the third and final effect, you can tribute one zombie monster, including himself because he's a zombie, and then target one face of monster your opponent controls, take control of it, but it cannot attack or activate its effects until the end of this turn. Look at this, take control of it, and then we're done with this part. Then it says, but it cannot attack or activate its effect until the end of this turn. You steal the monster freaking permanently, by the way. 
This is insane. <laughs> you steal a monster permanently, and the only kind of drawback is that until the end of this turn, you cannot attack or activate its effect until... yeah. So, one insane terrifying thing that you can technically do is Forbidden Drop negate your opponent's Dragoon, now it can be targeted, you steal the Dragoon, you pass, and now you have a real Dragoon on the field. Yeah, can't be targeted, can be destroyed, and can negate stuff. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of scary. And it's very easy to use, it can be revived back 65 billion times with White Fate and Scarlet. Okay, uh, this card will change Eldritch completely. This card is insane. Uh, it's really good. Yeah, it's it's insane. But the, the Continuous Spell, how good is it? Uh, let's find out. Continuous Spell, the only thing that matters is this right here. Golden Land. Alright, so if there's Golden Land, it is searchable by uh, every single one of your... Uh, sorry. What's the name, Black uh, Awakenings? What's the name? Oh my god! Uh, wait, Destiny... I, I, how come I actually forgot the name? Uh, the, okay, the, you know, Black Awakening, White Fate, and Scarlet. They can all fetch you those Golden Lands uh, cards, but uh, if you actually send it with uh, Golden Castle of Stromberg, aka uh, Eldorlando, it's not too great because it actually sends it to the graveyard, so you can't recur it back, and it doesn't have an effect in the graveyard. So, the first effect... Oh, actually, uh, both effects are hard ones per turns. During your main phase, you can Fusion Summon one Fusion Monster from your extra deck, using zombie monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. So, a regular polymerization effect, but it stays on the field. And if a zombie monster is special summoned by a card effect, uh, you can target one set card in the spell and trap zone. It cannot be activated this turn. Alright, uh, well, first of all, there's one thing that I want to say. Barricade Board Blocker lo um, is uh, looking pretty cool in Eldritch now, because you can discard a card, uh, you know, get your end phase mills with, you know, I don't know, maybe you're playing Curry Bandit or something, and then recycle it back, and then next turn you can play it, and you can also get back your uh, Golden Castle of Strombergs, your fake Golden Castles. And yeah, if a zombie monster is special summoned by a card of a king, target one set card in the spell and shop zone, including your cell, but who cares, cannot be activated this turn. I mean, I don't know. Uh, this effect won't be too used, but it can be used. Because if you have this and you're super polling, so using it during your opponent's turn, you can log them out of one spell and trap and then uh, they have less cards to work with, I guess. It doesn't change too much, yeah. Okay, whatever. But I don't think this card will see too much play, if anything, maybe a one-off, but I actually personally wouldn't play it. I would still play three of this, obviously, because you can super poly with it. So super poly is now, like I said, infinitely better. Uh, it's kind of like how when they released the Fire Fist super poly target, it was more of a hindrance to Fire Fist instead of being an actual boost, because they don't actually play the fusion, but the fusion destroys them because it only takes two Beast Warriors. And this will destroy Eldritch very, 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 very hard. Especially if they ban every tuner card so you can go no longer Needle Fiber combo you will actually be forced to play conservative pure Eldritch, and that is my favorite way of playing Eldritch. I love pure Eldritch so much, but yeah, absolutely fantastic uh, new support cards. I just, like this, this fusion guy, the Shadow monsters are just insane cards. I love them so much. I'm just really happy and really hyped for them, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching my video, and I will see you next time. Peace!